Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Did You Know Business? I am Nasr Shuraim Abdul Mu'min. Today we're going to be discussing on a very important topic, which is collaboration in businesses. A lot of people are scared to collaborate when it comes to business. Joining me to have this beautiful conversation is none other than Ummu Haini Ahmed Amin, the leading partner at the Metropolitan Law, and she's very conversant with Islamic finance, or rather, ethical finance. But before we kickstart this conversation, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the show. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi Good to have you again. Thank you for having me. Jazakallah khair. Just before we go to our conversation for today, I'm so intrigued by the fact that you're a legal practitioner and you're also someone who is very conversant with Islamic banking and finance. How did you develop that interest? Well, it came first as a, as a means to, you know, strive uh, um, to, I, I'd like to say to put food on my table. It was very new. <laughs> In so, Nigeria then, and I um, um, came out from from corporate practice mm. to start my law firm, and I thought that this will be a very good way to argument what I do because you know when you start as a lawyer, you always start with friends and family 100%. before they start to develop confidence in what you're doing. So I thought I could do something, you mm. know, to argument my practice. And during my master's, uh, this I stumbled on Islamic finance. During your master's? Yeah, my master's in business and commercial law. So I stumbled on Islamic finance, and um, uh, there was a lot of controversy around it. And I felt that that's an area I need to develop. Mm. And Nigeria wasn't really too keen on Islamic finance then. So that's that was in 2008. 2008? Yes. Wow. So from there, you know, the, the rest is history. Inshallah, yes. may Allah make it easy. Now, come back to our topic for today, which is about yes. collaboration. Yeah. Uh, as a legal practitioner, how important do you think collaboration is in business? You know, um, collaboration, usually I describe it as coming together of different people, different minds, objectives you know, you know, different um, ideas, but the same objective. Mm -hmm. And when you collaborate, you get your businesses to move on, mm -hmm. like I said. So as a legal practitioner, it is very important for us to collaborate, especially, um, for example, if you have um, matters that deal with data protection and all that, you need an IT person mm -hmm. to be able to. If you have things to do with forensic science, you need to give everything give evidence in court, right. you need to collaborate with an expert witness, a doctor and all that. So for for a legal practitioner, uh, collaboration cannot be underestimated. You do a lot of work together. And of course, um, within the legal, uh, legal space, mm. you find out that um, firms collaborate right. to work together because uh, what they are trying to do um, is not something that both of them have expertise in. Mm. So, you know, you just join your hands, join, put your heads together, collaborate, and it makes it better. That's what I feel. Amazing. Yeah. A lot of people are scared to go into collaboration simply because they think, uh, if I go into collaboration with this person, or this is my friend, we're going to have issues. Some have this personality whereby they don't like problems at all. You know, my friend will always say he wants to sleep well in the night, so he doesn't want to collaborate with anybody. He rather runs his business on his own. What do you say to this kind of people with such mindset? Um, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not condemning people that have that mindset, mm. but I am also saying that they don't want to move faster than they should. Mm. You know, because um, if you put your heads together, usually, you know, you're not an island in yourself. Right. Knowledge is very diverse, ideas are diverse. So if you want your businesses to move on, then you need to, but, but of course there are disadvantages mm. and advantages. But if you want to make your business better, right. then you need to take that risk of collaborating. Mm. Of course you need to do your due diligence, find out if you share the same objectives. It's very important so to have- So sharing the same objectives is very important. Yes. Regardless that your ideas are different, but mm. you are trying to arrive at the same objective. 
uh, if I use Islamic finance as uh, 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 as an example, you will want to buy a car from uh, from an Islamic bank. You want to take a lease right. of a car. So you go to a conventional bank. This one goes to an Islamic bank. Both of you arrive at the same destination, but you know, different uh, ideas, different ways of doing it. So it's the same thing as collaboration. Mm -hmm. You have different ideas, but then you, the same objectives. So I think that um, it would be good to take that risk and collaborate. Um, there's an African proverb that says, if you want to, um, if you want to reach your destination, um, you, 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 you alone, mm. then it's slower. But if you want to gather everybody and go, then you go together faster. You mm. reach that destination. Right. Easier. So I think that um, for those that are scared, it's not unfounded. But then uh, businesses are risky in general. The best businesses, mm. people take a lot of risks. So if you collaborate, I think it will be better. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Umuhanu, I just want to take a short break and we'll be right back. Thank you. All right, there, viewers, stay tuned and we will be right back. Welcome back. Alhamdulillah, we've been discussing with Umuhani Ab Ahmed Amin, the leading partner of the Metropolitan Law. You're welcome back. Thank you. So, you know, before we went for a break, you said that it's okay for us to take, you know, a risk when it comes to collaboration. Can you tell us some of the things we should expect when we, when we collaborate with people, some of the challenges that come with it? So when you collaborate with people, um, so I, I am talking from my own experiences. Right. Um, sometimes you find out that you have issues that will come up and uh, because you're approaching it differently, then you have to, sometimes you'll be at loggerheads as, as a, um, what do you think we should be able to do relating to this issue mm. and all that. But you know, like I said earlier that uh, for businesses, um, you have to create sustainability, for example. If you want your business to be sustainable, it's you're not an island in yourself. You need all the human resource around. So usually you have a common objective. Then um, you forget about sentiments. You look at what is best for the business, regardless of how you think it should be done. I am the leading partner at the law firm, but there are a few times when I, I say, okay, this is how I think it should go. And then a younger lawyer will tell me, no, I don't think this, I will say, okay, take your pick. Mm. Go do what you think is best. We all want to achieve the same thing. Right. So many times they come back to me saying, oh, you were actually right. But then uh, for a business to be sustainable, you also have to be able to allow everyone um, free ways of thinking mm. for the benefit of the business. That way you create sustainability, you, you're, you have your capacity right. and everyone is, um, is happy to say that I am contributing to this mm. business mm. to make it successful. Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Now coming to my next question, you are the convener of the African International Conference for Islamic Finance. Uh, what is the conference about? So the conference is basically an Islamic finance conference. Mm. It, started, uh, it started 10 years back. This is the 10th year. When you say Islamic, does that mean the non-Muslim climate? Huh? Of, course, of, of course not. <laughs> so the, these, these are the things we're trying to debunk when right. it comes to the ISIF. ISIF has been here since 2013. Mm -hmm. It's a biannual conference and we gather the world's expert right. in and outside Nigeria to come together to have a conversation about Islamic finance and the way forward, how it can be sustainable mm. and all. For for this year's um, cons um, the, for this year's theme, yeah. it's called um, sustainability and the future of the African markets. Mm. Two point zero, wow. two point zero because it was the same theme. Um, last uh, 2019 fourth ISIF and why we still have the same theme is because it's the same issues we're still looking at right and um, so far we have been able to gather experts in and around uh, the world from Nigeria Africa and the mm -hmm. world to come and have a conversation not just to 
have a conversation in a room and move away but to have a conversation that will create value for africa especially for in infrastructure because it's what we have the deficit of so we we have been having i save to be able to again debunk that notion that is for muslims alone and that um and that uh, so only Muslims can and we try to also educate Muslims that just because you're Muslims does not mean you understand Islamic finance right. um, some of the speakers are not even Muslims mm. some of the people in Nigeria today that understand Islamic finance are not Muslims really? I, I have a friend um, a, colleague, a colleague of mine who who I always say understands Islamic finance more than anyone I have seen in Nigeria. And she's evil, she's Christian, she's Catholic, Amazing. and all that. And so these are, these are what we are trying to uh, um, create, create awareness for people to understand Islamic finance right. and how sustainable it is and how much of um, a buffer it is when it comes to financials. I remember during the... Uh, during the uh, uh, crunch down of the economy of the world, right. all the Islamic financial institutions did not suffer, mm. you know. And um, so th this conference um, is, is a way of creating awareness. It's for Nigeria, again, to be able to delve into Islamic finance and see what it brings. Amazing. So far, you know, since it started in 2013, right. I think the first Sukub was in 2013, Ocean Sukub. And from there, we've had four years down the line, the federal government decided to um, to start up a Sukuk in 2017. Um, it had three tranches, which were oversubscribed and successful. Right. And from that 2013, we've had, we used to have just Lotus, Bank, Lotus um, uh, Capital as one of the um, one one of the Islamic fund managers, the mm. only Islamic fund manager in Nigeria. Amazing. Now we have about five or six Islamic fund managers wow. down the line. We have three banks down the line. We have um, five insurance uh, takaful companies in Nigeria. Amazing. You know, so it's really growing. And of course, we have Windows. Mm. We have Sterling Alternative. We have SunTrust Bank, um, Jais, Taj. Um, uh, Lotus Bank. So Alhamdulillah, sure. uh, and we have been a part of that growth from the beginning uh, up until now. So sure. um, uh, this conference is going to exhibit that for all of us. Yeah. Amazing. What would be this? Because you know, well, my question rather would be: yeah. Is it for everybody? Like, is it just going to be for maybe you have to be in the banking sector, or you have to be a doctor, or you have to be in the media? What kind of people are expected to be there? So um. That's why I said we're trying to change the narrative. Mm. We're trying to see every um, ev every space can can be able to benefit benefit from Islamic finance. Like we have um, a session that uh, that says, "Where is my sukuk?" This is for health infrastructure. Mm. So we're getting people from the medical. Uh, industry to come and say, okay, can you can Islamic fi finance uh, finance infrastructure, medical infrastructure, medical equipment, for example, right. you know. So this is um, like telecommunication. We also have a session on telecommunication. Oh, really? Yes. So we are so we are talking telecommunication. We are talking um, health infrastructure. We are talking work work uh, like endowment endowments and trust funds you know social infrastructure for wow. um that will be sustainable um when you understand work you realize that it's sustainable it's it can't you can't take it away you can't even remove it as um from where it is it's work then it, it stopped mm -hmm. whatever investment you have has to be in that space Mm -hmm. And it has to create that. Uh, it has to be used for that purpose, which it was meant to be. Right. Um, right. Like, like we are also trying to create um, the metropolitan work. Mashallah. Yeah. So the work is for us to uh, create an education trust fund mm -hmm. to see how we can be able to also um, 
using our corporate social responsibility space to be able to add value right. uh, and educate people that are um, are not able to to go to school. For you know, sure. so. Um, this, this is what the conference is all about. It's amazing. Know. We look forward to coming for the yes, conference. Inshallah. <laughs> May Allah make it easy. Amen. And my last question before we end the program. Yes. Well, a lot of young ladies are watching you out there. And, or rather, even the guys who are watching. Do you have any message for the sisters who are watching you out there right now? Yes. So it's for every girl. You know, I, I am that girl. <laughs> I'm that girl. I know where I was coming from, especially where I'm coming from. Right. And so I always tell um, my, my, my girls to be intentional in what they want to do. It doesn't matter if you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a farmer, or you want to even you know, sell clothes or anything you want to do, be intentional in what you want to do. Sure. You know, and then the rest will be easy for you. Be confident that you're a woman. You have the ability to do everything. If you have the ability to be able to give birth, you know, look after the home, still go to work, mm -hmm. and you know, you have the ability to do amazing things with with other people. Why not yourself? You know, so be intentional, and inshallah, everything will be all right. Does the be intentional apply to me as well, and the brothers watching? Yes. <laughs> I mean, for every person yeah, trying to grow a business, you know, I say that to women because, you know, there's, there's a lot um, a woman has to go through, especially in this society. True. I am in the legal profession. Usually where I come from, you don't hardly even go to school. Mm -hmm. so, so when you come to that space, they feel, oh, it's a man's space and mm -hmm. all that. Um, and you know, sometimes I used to feel like, okay, this is how it's created. But then you push, this is what you want to do. I've always wanted to be a lawyer. So why would I allow, you know, other people's thinking to, to guide me through what I want to do? Sure. So that's why I kept saying, be yeah. intentional. Be yeah. intentional. I will be intentional. <laughs> Thank you so much, Umohani, for Thank coming you. on the program. Thank you Marikin for having Lawfi. me. Thank you. Yeah, viewers. Be intentional. Always remember that. We've been discussing with Umohani Ahmed uh, Amin. May Allah bless her for coming on the program. And until the next episode, we'll leave you all in the care of Allah. This program, Did You Know Business, was brought to you by Did You Know in collaboration with Bidad Realty. Until the next episode, I'll leave you all in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.